In this Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can make this rotating table. As you can see here, I can change the dimensions and also change the number of these sections. Uh, and also by defining a point, I'm going to show you how you can make this more parametric by changing the location of the rotation. And we have control on the offsets. As you can see, we can increase or decrease these offsets. Let's just increase that. You can see that we have different offsets. We can control that and we can also control the extrusion. So we're going to talk about this in this tutorial. Uh, I'm going to also show you how you can define a rotation range. So you can see that I can change the rotation here. And this is going to be a fun tutorial of how you can use a simple rotation and offset a series of offset to produce this uh, parametric table. So before we start this tutorial, if you're new to our channel, welcome. Consider subscribing because we produce weekly tutorials of, uh, about Grasshopper, Rhino Grasshopper tutorials. And uh, I'm going to put up a video for those who are new to our channel up here, which you can watch and learn about Grasshopper. This is the basics. And also, if you want to enroll in our course, we have a complete parametric course uh, from the beginning for Grasshopper. You can also watch uh, our lessons here, which I will put in this playlist. Okay, let's get started from scratch. What I want to do is to, first of all, uh, produce a series of rectangles on the ground. Then let me just explain what I want to do. Okay, assume that this is the base tangle, and we want to just, uh, let's just make a copy and make that smaller again. This is not what we are going to actually do, but I want to show you what will happen when we do this in Grasshopper. So we're going to make a series of offset of these rectangles, and then we're going to rotate them uh, from the center with the y-axis. Assume I just rotate this 20 degrees, then I rotate that maybe 10 degrees. This is going to be 0, and this is going to be minus 10, okay? Just to show you what's going to happen. So this is going to help us to produce the table really easily. And I'm going to make that by going to the curve section. And in the primitive, uh, we can scroll down to this one, rectangle, which is here. Let me just put the bifocals plug in. So you can see what I'm doing. And here we go. So if you look at the X size and the Y size, it's a domain. That means you have to define a one a starting point, a starting number, and an ending number. Okay, so you can see it's minus one to one, and this is what's happening. We can go to the math section and define a construct domain. So I'm going to give that to the x size and uh, define a start and an end. To make this completely at the center, I'm going to go to domain start, right click expression, and type minus x divided by 2. Uh, that means that if I give, uh, uh, assume that it's 10, it's going to be minus 5 to 5, right? So let me just show you what's happening here. So when we give this minus x and a 5 here, and this is the center of the x, y, and z, so it's going to be minus uh, this number divided by 2 to plus uh, x divided by 2. So that's not really hard. We're going to set that expression to x minus x divided by 2 and expression x divided by 2. And let's just give this a number, 12.5 maybe. So this is going to be exactly the number we want for the length. And now we're going to copy this control C, control V and give this to the y. And now you can see that it's going to give you complete control on the dimensions. Okay, let's go for the offset. I'm going to use the offset. And this is the base uh, of the offset command in Grasshopper. There are other plugins you can install, but let's just use the basic offset, which you can find in the curve and the utility section here. And I'm going to give that to the curve. And now I'm going to make a range of offset to define those rectangles. So let's just use this range. 
uh, the domain of the range. We have a tutorial about range, so if you don't know about this, I'm going to put that up here. It's a good one to learn how range works, okay, with Graph Mapper. But for now, again, we have a domain, so I'm going to make a construct domain and say maybe from the offset is from 1.2 to maybe five, okay? Something like that. That means that the minimum offset is from this number and the maximum is like this. The steps is going to define the number of those rectangles. Maybe we want from three to 12. So I'm going to define that. And now you can see that we have a range of offsets, okay? So we can give that to the distance and you can see it's going to offset that completely, okay? So these are, let's just turn this off, these are the rectangles we need here. And we can increase the offset here to make it a little bit bigger, make this a little bit smaller, okay? So this is the way we can control these offsets. Now what we want to do is to simply rotate them, just as I explained that, rotate 3D. We're going to rotate that around a point and an axis. So let's just use that, rotate 3D. The geometry we want to rotate is the these curves. The center of rotation can be the center of the XY plane. So I'm going to give this a point and right click set one point to zero and enter. That means the center, that's fine. The axis is going to be the Y. So I'm going to use the Y axis. And the angle is based on radians, remember? we have to make that in degrees. So I'm going to right click here and use the degrees input. We always have radians input here in Grasshopper. So now, again, we're going to make a range. Uh, the number of the steps is going to be the same, but we have to define a different construct domain. Maybe we want to rotate that 25 degrees. I'm going to make a trick here and make that from minus, uh, from 25 degrees to minus 25 degrees, right? Like minus six. You can also control that with another number. You maybe you want to define your rules here. So I'm going to give that to the angle. And here we go. As you can see, it's going to produce lots of rectangles here. And that is because this input is in groups. Usually when you offset things in Grasshopper, uh, Grasshopper makes that into groups so you can manage them later. But what we have to do here is to make the output of the range also in groups. You can see it's not in groups. And if you don't know about a flatten graph and simplify, I will put up a video like, uh, right here so you can watch it and learn what is flatten and graph. So I'm going to use the graph to make that all input also as groups. So those two inputs are in groups and you can see we are good to go and we have the base rectangles. Now it's time to make the, the thickness and extrusion. So I'm going to make an offset again of these curves. And we can control that with a distance. Again, we can change that number to minus six if we want to put that inwards. And what we have to do is to connect these two set of curves together. So these two are going to be together and these two again. We have to use the loft, loft them together. You can find that in from surface freeform here. This is the loft command. And we want to loft these curves with these curves, okay? Now you can see that there is not going to give you an output. That is because Again, when you use the offset, let me show you here. You can see that the groups are like this, and there are two zeros. Let me show you with the red. Again, you can use uh, watch that tutorial about flatten graph and simplify. But now, you can see that there are uh, two zeros uh, behind the groups, okay? Now, when we just put an offset on this, you can see it's going to put a zero uh, at the front of that. So. We can just get rid of those zeros by right clicking and simplifying all of the outputs. It's going to be all in one group without zeros. Let me just show you here, as you can see. And we are good to go. Let's just make an offset and we can extrude that. So we have to extrude that in the normal direction. The last step is to make that in a normal direction. We can find that from going to the PARMS menu and connecting a plane 
and a vector. So if you have a flat curve, okay, uh, let me show you here, you can connect that to a plane, okay, to a plane, and then connect that to a vector. That's going to give that a normal direction of that flat curve. So remember, if you have a flat curve, a planar curve, you can simply do that with this technique, a plane and a vector. So I'm going to just connect that to one of these rectangles and again a vector that's going to give us the normal direction go to the math and multiplication multiply that with a number maybe 2.5 is going to be fine and give that to the direction so now you can see that we can also control the extrusion that's it that's how we can do that and let me show you by connecting a uh, display custom preview so you can see the colors here and maybe from the surface I'm going to use this BREP edges so they just show in red and now we can have this in a better preview so this is the way you can just extrude let's just change the extrusion you can see that we can change the extrusion change the offset okay so you can see that we can control that with a uh, Right, offset. Okay, so that was the tutorial of how you can rotate a series of rectangles. As you can see, we can control that. If you ch move that point from the xy plane out of the x direction, you can see it's going to also give you a cool results. It's going to change the rotation. You can see that. You can put that at the corner, maybe one like that. So remember, you can always play with this. And let's just set that again to zero and have this here. So you can change the dimension of the base rectangles, you can change the offset, remember you can change that. So we can also increase that to more. We want something. If we go to the front view, you can see that by increasing that and decreasing that, that's going to change the shape of this. Maybe we want to produce like this. That's beautiful. And we can also decrease or uh, increase the number of those panels and make that happen. Remember, you have to control the offsets when you decrease the offsets. So just play with these numbers to produce the best results. That was the tutorial of how you can make that in Grasshopper. Let's just bake this. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe to our channel and like this video, comment. Uh, how do you feel about this? Was it easy? Was it hard? And give me some feedbacks about this. But this is a cool tutorial of how you can make a series of rotating rectangles, just like similar to this table, and uh, make it in Rhino Grasshopper. Okay, see you next time.